Good day class. In this video, we are going to talk about the inspection on the skin disorder. Same as the information in the other videos, in, especially in the inspection, although some of the conditions that we do not treat, we do not use acupuncture to assist. But it is important as a practitioner, you need to know at least in the clinical practice, at least when you see the patient presents with certain manifestations, you will recognize what's the problems directly. And then, although we don't treat them with acupuncture, but at least you need you can refer them to other practitioners. And some of them are contagious diseases, so it is important for you as a practitioner to recognize these, these situations. So from the inspection of the skin, we, some of them we can treat with acupuncture, some we don't. And also from this session, we can use the manifestation of the skin disorder to change the way of thinking, how we understand through the theory. So the first one, we're going to introduce some of the skin color and lusters. The skin color, same as the facial, dis facial complexions, is, I have said that it, it is a bit difficult for us to use, to apply this section in African countries. As we've got different races, and different races have different skin colors. But just in general, you will know that the, the different colors, the red colors, the yellow color, the black color. So the red color can re reflect the heat. No matter what kind of heat, the heat or the fire, that's the same stuff. The yellow skin can be the damp sheets from the bio or from the spleen, especially it often indicates jaundice, black skin. Especially for the yellow skin, sometimes it is not easy to see, but you can see from the eyes, right? When we introduce the eyes, you can see from the jaundice from the black skin. So here, Remember, we mentioned at the beginning that in terms of the color, we only refer to East, Eastern Asia, Eastern Asia. So the black color in South Africa or in African countries may be normal due to the race difference. Vitiligo, vitiligo is abnormal, so you can see as the image there. Some parts of the skin is lighter. So that's the vitiligo. The changes in skin morphology. From here, it refers to the dryness, moist, moistness, rough skin, swelling, etc. And from these manifestations, sometimes we can see, or we can, in these manifestations can imply the pathogens such as the dry skin, the dry skin and rough skin. This is very similar to the soil in the, on the ground. It's very dry and rough. So this is a lack of the water. S similar in the body, a lack of body fluid. That's why our skin becomes dry and rough. The moistness, if the patient's skin Presents as oily, so or in other words, extra moisture. So this can indicate the dampness in the body. This also because dampness is an in pathogen. Because the blood and body fluids, blood also the in the in fluid. So the dry skin and rough skin can present with both either body fluid deficiency or in deficiency. Also can be a lot of deficiency, but, but no matter what aspects, it must be in material. 
that's the in pathogen. Swelling, swelling we have it, we have mentioned before in the edema. So from the edema we can see that the petit on the skin. Edema, edema often caused by water retention due to lung, spleen, and kidney. So when we see edema, don't only focus on the kidney and blood from the Western medicine. When you see the disorder of the water metabolism in the body, you need to think about our theory, which organs are related, which is the kidney, the spleen, and, skin, and the lung. So here are some of the images. The first one is the rough skin. As you can see, the color of the skin is not even and also dry and rough. This can indicate the blood deficiency and also body fluid deficiency in the body. The second picture on the right side is the edema, the water retention, that's the pitted. The next one is the disorder of the skin conditions. We're going to show you some images of these conditions, as some of them are quite common and some of them we can see in our acupuncture practice. The first one, maculae and rashes. A maculae is a change in the surface, in surface color without a deviation or depressions or non payable and no discoloration upon pressure. What does it mean here is, we just give you some definition first. A maculae can be divided into Yang maculi and Yin maculi. So one stuff, one object you can separate into Yin and Yang. Here is a Yang maculi and Yin maculi. Yang maculi a deep red, purple red, with an excess heat. Yin maculi is pale bluish or purple, coupled with the Qi deficiency. As you can see why we separate them into yang and yin and yang. That's because the cause. One is because excess heat, one is because of yin deficiency. So the next image, we get next, next slide, I'm going to show you some images. Yang maturi, yin maturi. The yang, what's important here is the although you can see the the colors on the skin. These you can see on the skin, but very important, very important that these redness they not even ate from the skin, which means if you touch the skin, if you palpate the skin, you don't feel anything on the skin. If you use your finger to touch the skin, such as if you touch from here to here, Above the even the maturity, you don't feel anything. You can see, but you don't feel, which means it is the bleeding under the skin. So that's the the maturity and the yin and yang presents from the color. Second one we're going to introduce is the rashes. A rash is an area of irritated or swollen skin. It is palpable. So it can feel if you touch on the skin and it has this discoloration upon pressure. And the rashes can be further divided into measles, rubella, and urticaria. For these, we also, most of these, we don't treat with acupuncture, but when you see, you need to recognize measles. Measles is a high contagious infection in pediatric departments, so it mostly happens in the kids. In the kids, and um, you have the characteristic of the development. The patient will have most of the patient will have flu-like flu-like symptoms, such as cough, sneezing, running nose, and after a few days, two or three days. We can see the the rash 
or the measles the you will see in next slides the inside of the mouth and um, you can you also can show it on the face and the, the body and the rest of the body so as you can see here the measles mostly happens in kids Rubella. Rubella is a pale red or small dispiritus. Although these we don't use, most of them we don't use acupuncture to help, but we do can use herbal medicine to help. When we use herbal medicine to help, we also need to figure out what's the cause. That's why we introduce the cause from here. How do you know what's the cause? You're going to see from the, the color the wind, the wind attacked the tears affecting qi and blood. Why the wind? That's because the rashes, no matter the measles or better, they can develop from one area to the other area, migrate. Does it ring any bells to you? Migration, that's the characteristics of wind. Something moves something developed from one area to the other area that's the migration so that's the characteristic of a wind so when we use the treatment we will use the, the methods to relieve the wind if it presents as the redness then we think that's the, the heat or the fire in the body so we can use something to clear the heat relieve the heat in the body for babies we, we can use like her, the, the herbal medicine bath, which means we cook the, the herbs. We use the liquid, we bath or we soak the baby in the, in the herbal medicine, in, in the medicine. So while they bath, we're going to use herbal medicine as the, the water to bath the baby. That's the, we try to treat the problem from the skin directly. Also, because some of the medicine can be absorbed from the skin. That's why in the the form, the dosage form of the medicine, we have the ointments or the cream. This is also the better. A carrier. A decarrier, also known as hives, a kind of skin rash. So here, the two images of the hives in different skin colors. Hives. It can occur as, as a result of a allergic reaction or wind attack the skin for the skin problem we always think about the wind the reason is because the development you will develop from one area to the other area or you will develop on one area and become bigger and bigger that's also migrates because the air the areas changes blisters blisters as you can see from the images, it refers to the skin disorder that has water in the affected area. And when you see the categories of this session, the white belts, chicken pox, shingles, hot sores, and eczema, sometimes you, you might feel confused, that especially when you study Western medicine or in your other diagnosis course. This category may be different from the Western medicine. The reason is because the causes of these problems are similar. That's why we put them together. Also, the manifestations are similar. The first one you don't need to focus on there. This is not common to see nowadays. The chicken pox. It's a highly contagious disease, especially in kids, so also in pediatric departments. Patient may present with fever 
caused by damaged sheets. So if we use if we use Chinese medicine treatments, you will focus on the damaged sheet. And also it will depend on the manifestation, such as this chicken pox. This might not be the damaged sheet. That's because the, the skin color is not red, it's the pale red. The pale red might be the coldness. If the damp sheet, the skin will be red. So that's the heat. Like this is the redness, the redness. That's the heat. This is the shingles. Shingles refers to painful skin rashes with blisters in limited areas. Typically it happens from the waist to the chest or to the ribs area. So you can see. It happens like in, in a way from the back to front or from the back to the front in, in certain belts. It doesn't happen to all of the body, but that's the shingles. The shingles also due to damp heat and most of the condition. And for this, we can use acupuncture or herbal medicine to assist. Especially for the pain on the shingles, we also can use acupuncture to assist. Why we show you two, why I show you the these two images here is because, as you can see, the color difference. That's why it's red. This one is still red, but when you compare with the left one, it's pale. So this can indicate the different pathogens. The left side, the left one, the patient have more heat or have more severe excess heat. The image on the right side is not the heat is not as severe as the right uh, as the left side. So in the treatment we also we also we will also have different treatments awards these two patients, although with the same shingles. So this is also the shingles. As you can see, that's the, it happens around this belt. It always happens in this area. You can find the back, but the distribution is this. It won't happen up and down, but mostly near belts like this. From the back to the front the shingles. Shingles is quite common and we also can see in our clinics in acupuncture practice. We can use acupuncture or masturbation and herbal medicine to assist. The source, the source is a painful itching small blister around the mouth corner or nasal area. It can be any other areas, not has to be in nasal areas. So these are the this is the blister, the blisters. It's also the blisters, blisters. What's the difference between or among these images? What's we'll the third one and this one? As you can see the color, the yellow color. Yellow color is the heat, the fire. The pale color when you see from here. The, the second picture. So when you compare with these two, the second and the third picture, the third image does indicate the, the heat. This one may have the heat because of the, the source of blisters, but the heat is not severe. This one, the, the fourth picture, the patient also have heat. As you can see from the skin at the bottom, at the, at the base, it's red, so that's the heat. When you see this kind of patients, it can be the damp, dampness and heat, because the blister is water, so that's the dampness. The red skin, the red color on the skin, also from here you can see is the red, the yellow color, similar to this. The yellow color also can indicate the the heat condition. 
So that's how to understand from the manifestations. Asthma. Asthma you can see from these images and also we're going to see from the colors. MB heat coupled with eternal pathogenic wind. So as you can see for, for this session, for the skin disorder, we always think about the wind because it can develop from here to the source and ulcer. The source and ulcer. So that's the mouth ulcer. This is a patient that I saw last year. This patient has been suffering from multiple mouth ulcer for two years and then um, she was healed with herbal medicine, no acupuncture. The reason why I show you here is because the, the white color, they see the source around the mouth. It's not red. So this patient have the mouth ulcer, but around here it's not red, which means this patient, the cause of this ulcer is not heat. Is the deficiency. Abscesses. This is the skin inflammation. We are also going to focus on the color around there. So as you can see, this color also not red, kind of pale. So you will see the the heat, is severe heat or not. The next one, carbuncles. Carbuncles also a kind of ulcer. That's it's a incendiary. That why it is an incendiary because around the carbuncle or around the ulcer, we don't see the redness, which means it's the incendiary. Incendiary. This is a patient with un in unconsciousness condition. So this patient I saw him two years ago. He got uh, this ulcer for a few months and couldn't heal with the Western medicine and then we use the herbal medicine. This sore was healed after a few weeks. I can't remember, but when we study the therapeutics, when we go to this session, we can discuss the cases in details. How we heal this source is we use the herbal medicine, a very hot herbal medicine, the very hot property. The reason why the property, the ingredient of the, the ingredients of the herbal medicine is hot. That's because the due to in and coldness for this soul. Because you don't see the redness, you see pale color, that's the in condition. And also from the Uncles or the ulcers itself, if you remove the blood there, you also don't see very red, it's kind of pale. So the pale color can indicate the in condition. So in the treatments, we will use something to warm the body or something to warm the areas. Had it. When you compare with this one, this image to the the other image in two slides before. You can compare the the color around the skin is different. So this this one indicates the, the heat or the fire. The voice small deep rooted painful skin lungs. So from the descriptions you can go through by yourself. From here, I'm also going to focus on the color. The color. When you see these two, you will see this one. The one on the left side is red. This one is more pale. It's also inflammation. So from here, you can see the, the heat in the body. How severe the heat or what's the cause of the voice. So all above is the 
introduction on the skin disorder that we're going to introduce and we aim to show you the images that if you see in the clinics once you see you will recognize that's the purpose of this session and also the the other purpose of this session is as you can see the explanation when we go through the lectures I always, I always focus on the colors, the manifestations, how swollen, how painful, the how painful we did mention here, that's the discussion from the inquiry, but from this session, on the inspection, I always, I always focus on the color, how red, how pale, because, because this can indicate the heat or deficiency or either qi deficiency or blood deficiency in the body. So for the inspection, the colors are very important. Although in some situation here, we can't really see the colors properly because of different races. That's you will see in a tongue diagnosis in future. That's we, we, can, that's we can see from there and that's very important for our diagnosis. So here, just an example of that. Actually, it might be the first example how we apply the theories into clinical practice. The redness. When you see the redness, what can you think about the red, the the cause? So that's something from the theory. When you compare these two, these two are. The skin disorder, the D2 are red, but compared with the, in terms of the red, so the redness is a, a yang, but compared with these two colors, this one is worse, this one is better, not as red as the left one. So the right, the, the condition in the right picture is not as red as the left one. So this is the yang condition. And this one is the yang with yin yang. This one's yin with yin yang. So as you can see here, we again we use the theories to explain our clinical manifestations. That's how to use the how to apply the basic theories. In the next session, we're going to use a few minutes to introduce the inspection of the index finger in small children. This is a very typical in Chinese medicine and this only applies in children under the age of three. So above the age of three three years old, we don't use we don't use this method. And this method was recorded firstly in six hundred and eighteen AD. You're going to see the index finger. You're going to see the the veins in the index finger. Firstly, we're going to introduce the. We're just going to revise. You already have learned this. The DIP, PIP, MCP. So that's the three session. MCP, PIP, and the DIP. So for these three. Parts, we give them three names. So the, this, this one, this one. So here is DIP, PIP, MCP. From MCP to PIP is a wind pass. From MCP to DIP is qi pass. And from here above is life pass. The different parts is the gate of different area and if we can indicate the how severe the patient is. So the next image we're going to show you how to observe. So as you can see if this one is not clear, you can see the slightly something here. If you can see the vein clearly to the tip of the finger, this can indicate the the baby, the kids. Is in severe condition. So this one is the wind pass, qi pass, and life pass. 
if go to the life the, if the vein goes to the life path, it is very severe condition. So from here we can predict how the prognosis of the kids the kids problem. We also can predict the uh, not predict we can we can see from here what the pathogens from the color of the vein. The normal shape and color. Normally we don't see or very mild. Doesn't go a lot from there. So this one you can see slightly here. That's the index finger vein. We're also going to from for these you're going to go through by yourself it can help us to understand how severe the patient is it also can help us to understand what's the pathogen such as the color the color of the vein become red or become pale or purple it can indicate different indications Panda. The the previous slides the death the death and uh, superficial sometimes it's not easy to distinguish but the color we can distinguish also how far the vein goes to go to the wing parts chi parts or life parts that's something very easy to see bluish so you can go through this by yourself. Different colors can indicate different situation. Until now, as you can see, that we actually repeat a lot of stuff just in different areas, such as a pale color. Wherever you see a pale color, a pale white indicates qi and blood deficiency, insufficient generation of qi and blood. That's another way of saying qi deficiency. If a pale white color you see in a face or facial complexions, you also indicate deficiency. A pale color shows in the, on the skin, you also shows indicates the qi deficiency. So as long as you can figure out the cause of the pale color or the white color, it will be very easy or will be much easier for you to remember these conditions these indications. So for instance, now we introduce in quite a lot of clinical manifestations. And then in the test, I ask you, a pale white vein in the kids indicates different choices. Now you can choose qi deficiency. As when I ask you, a pale white tongue indicates but you will ask, I didn't introduce, I haven't introduced the tongue diagnosis, but what a pale tongue indicates will be the same. The pale tongue indicates the qi deficiency, the spleen qi deficiency. So that's very important to remember the different colors of different areas, the different colors, the indications of different colors. So that's how to study Chinese medicine, how to make, make it easier for you to understand, especially for the colors. The colors can help us a lot and we use different colors to di differentiate different pathogens, such as here, the bluish vein indicates the qi and blood of justice. That's the stasis right this is the same as bluish in the other in the other symptoms such as the facial complexion we mentioned the bluish or the cyan color that's also blastasis so that's very similar the shape or deficiency and excess so these are um, the inspection of the 
in that finger van and then when we see in clinics we will show you how to see or when we go back to the campus we will show you how to use this how to apply this method especially in the clinics when we see kids we will see the van under the age of age of three what's the difference the last session of the inspection we're going to talk very briefly about the equator. Equators include the flame, the stool, and the ring. Mostly, we're going to focus on, also it can be the tear or the nasal mucus, saliva. We're going to focus on the shape, color, quality, and volume. And because this kind of excreta, this although it is from it is in a category of inspection, but mostly in clinic, in clinic, we don't inspect by ourselves. But ideally, it is better for the practitioners to inspect. But sometimes it's just inconvenience for everyone so mostly we're going to have this information from inquiry we will ask the patient what's the volume what's the color of the flame if a patient is suffering from cough sputum and nasal discharge what we need to understand is the different properties such as the color the yellow thick sticky indicates heat consuming body fluids. So here again, I'm going to give you some one examples here. Why for yellow thick sticky sputum indicates heat. Sticky and thick. That's because the heat. Thick and sticky, that's because the heat concentrate the sputum. It's very similar you cook something, it becomes concentrated, that's why it becomes thick and sticky. So that's why when you see a thick, when you see thick and sticky sputum, that indicates the heat consuming body fluids. A white, thin, clear sputum indicates cold, that's the in pathogen. Thick, clear, that's also in pathogen. So that's how to use the theories to apply in clinical manifestation. So this, this you can go through by yourself, and also sometimes this, especially for sputums. A sputum sometimes patient will tell you that their phlegm have a lot of bubbles, white bubbles. What does this bubbles phlegm or bubbles smear, uh, sputum means to us? We can indicate the wind. So if the clear sputum, that's the coldness, and if the clear white sputum with a lot of bubbles in the sputum, then we can indicate the cold, the, the wind. Why it can be the wind? That's very similar if you, when you drink your cold drink with a stroke, if you blow water in the in the cold drink, what do you see from the cold drink? A lot of bubbles, right? The the thing it blows in, that's the the air. The air is the wind. The moving air is the wind. So if a patient presents with the sputum with a clear white and a lot of bubbles in the sputum, you think about the wind. Sometimes in some patients, especially some Chinese patients, if they knew the if they knew the Chinese medicine term, they will tell you that they suffer from wind phlegm directly. So that's because the wind phlegm. Saliva. Saliva also can indicate the patient's condition. Sticky, 
also can be heat. So it's sticky. So that's why sometimes when you study this, it's, it's very important for you to understand. If you understand, it will be very easy for you because sticky saliva, sticky deep sputum, sticky nasal, nasal mucus, they're all same problems. But if you don't understand, if you will remember one by one, one by one, it's very difficult to understand. And in future, you will mix them. So it is very important to understand them. Why? That's why in the lectures, I try to help you to understand the manifestation, help you to explain through the theory. And uh, it's very easy. It will be much easier for you to remember. Also, if you don't remember, it will be very easy for you to explain by yourself. Hyper slivy slivy the Asian this excess saliva can be spleen chi deficiency. The reason why that's because spleen chi deficiency, spleen deficiency, especially for spleen yang or chi deficiency, the the water, the body fluid, the saliva is not concentrated. That's why in as the manifestation, we see that the patient got excess saliva. So these, some of these, although I didn't go through one by one, these are important. Because you can see these informations, these manifestations in clinic. The stuff from vomiting. This is also the thick, clear oldness vomit indicates cold due to stomach yang fading, stomach yang deficiency, thin, clear oldness, yang deficiency, herbert, foul smelling, heat. So that's all what you need to understand. And you need to understand why. Because the coldness, This is very similar in the fridge. If, if we put something in the fridge, you don't feel, you don't smell the, the odor a lot. If in the summer you put your food outside the fridge, it becomes foul smelling. That's the heat. So that's how to understand this. And also for the stuff from vomiting we also need to mostly we will ask the patient if you have a chance you are more than welcome to see to observe by yourself you will have a, a better understanding and also a deeper impressions on them that's mostly especially in the clinic the outpatients mostly we, we ask the patient what's the, the color the volume like watery yellow the different colors can indicate different situation. Fresh blood contains warm stuff. Why? Because the heat, the summer heat, burns out the the veins or the vessels. That's called bleeding. So that's the heat. So when you see these manifestations, you need to think about the cause. Thesis. Thesis. Most, mostly we also ask the patient. The thesis can be loose to all. Thin clear again. Thin clear. When we mention the thin clear, cold, dampness, or yang deficiency, right? Yang deficiency also results in cold condition. Foul smelling. Heat. When you see the foul smelling, that's heat, dampness. It can be either, it can be both. And then you're going to figure out what's the cause of this heat. Loose stool deficiency, thin yang deficiency. So that's the, the hint you need to remember. 
In feces, a thin, clear, watery stool is called dampness. Thin, clear, watery nasal mucus called dampness in the lung. Thin, clear, watery urine. That's not watery, sorry. At least urine is always watery. Thin, clear urine. We're going to discuss later. Also, coldness. Foul, yellow. Brown, yellow, the color, heat or deficiency. Brown, sticky, foul smell stuff from the nasal mucus, heat. So these are the links. These are the, the formula that you need to remember. It will be much easier for you to understand all these manifestations. Even something we didn't introduce because in the clinical manifestations, you can see a lot of something that's new to you. But as long as you know how to explain, it will be much easier for you to understand. There's one thing we, I want to mention here is the bloody stool. The bloody stool can be the stool with blood that you can see with the red color. Or it also can be this kind of color. We call the tar, tar, tar like. So T A R tar like stool. This also the the indications of bleeding in internal bleeding. So it's the tar like color indicates we saw bleeding in the spleen and or stomach. So we need to be careful. Although this bleeding, we also don't use acupuncture to help, you can use a herbal medicine or in severe condition you need to refer the patient to the hospital. But just keep in mind that this kind of stool, black or tar-like tar color, even the property is tar-like, is the bleeding. So you need to keep in mind. The urine, clear, Normal urine, clear urine, scanty yellow urine, which means less urine. That's because the heat concentrated fluid. Clear perfumes, clear and a lot of urine, clear and thin, coldness. We realize everything clear, thin. A lot of involved in terms of volume as the coldness. Less in volume or sticky or thick. There's also less as the heat center. The matter in urine, in stool, in mucus, in sputum. The last one we're going to talk about is the also the bloody urine. The bloody urine indicates the damp heat. That's because same as the bloody stool. That's because the, it can be the heat damage the veins. The heat have the characteristic of bleeding. It also can be the deficiency. But what I want to mention here is the manifestation. The bloody urine sometimes is not only red. It can be this kind of color. So it's like a tea color, like tea. So it has to be the red or even lighter, like lighter. Also, you need to keep in mind that might be blood in urine. So in, if patient is showing you this, you need to ask them to go to the lab to double check. Turbid urine, rice washed water. Damp heat or kidney chi failure, that's the turbid urine. And also sometimes the patient will tell you that in their in their bathrooms they see a lot of ants close to the urine when they drop on the floor. In this situation, that's the it might indicate the diabetes. So you need to send the patient to the lab to double check. So from 
this session, we going to, we have introduced some of the inspections. We going to repeat some of them in other sessions because, such as uh, the smelling and listening, some of the some of the the other information we can see from other diagnostic uh, method. From this session, many clinical manifestations that we introduced here. We have mentioned that some of them we don't use acupuncture to help to treat. What's important here is you need to recognize, you need to know that that is abnormal. You need to know which one's dangerous or not. And um, this is a safeguard for your practice. In the next video, we're going to start a new session of the diagnostic method. Thank you, guys.